was taken for the value of the metal. Janice Hamilton in the grounds of Felsted School, where a statue of her daughter, Camilla, once stood. It's almost five foot life-size sculpture in bronze. Her ponytail was flying, she was running with her hockey stick and it made people want to go and see it and walk by it and touch it and maybe score a goal. Camilla was just 15 years old when she died in a car accident in 2003. Last week, her statue was stolen. We were absolutely shocked, just numb. It's been very difficult because it takes you to somewhere you don't want to think that people would do such a thing. You don't want to think that someone wouldn't think about the emotional consequences. We are offering a substantial reward for the recovery of the sculpture. So if it's for the value of the bronze, um, we'd like people to think about the more significant value. It's, it's so emotional for everybody. It is much more than a piece of metal and and people really would love it to be back where it belongs if they had a daughter or a sister or a loved one that they miss they would probably think how would that feel if that was meant to remind people of that person and maybe that might be enough to say actually it's not worth it for them for the metal we've had a thousand messages of support on a Facebook group my son set up, all of them desperate to see it back where it belongs. It brings so much pleasure. And the theft has sparked fresh grief over Camilla's loss. Today, where her statue stood, roses had been laid. Gareth George, BBC Look East. And if you can help the police with that inquiry, the number to ring is 0300 333 Double four, double four. That's o three hundred three three three, double four, double four. Tributes have been paid today to two soldiers from this region killed in Afghanistan. Lance Corporal Scott Hardy from Essex and Private James Grigg from Suffolk were both serving with the Royal Anglians. They died on Tuesday. The Defence Secretary Bob Ainsworth said today they were both courageous, dedicated men who died fighting to bring greater security to Afghanistan and the UK. And there were tributes, too, closer to home. The details now from Kevin Birch. There's a real sense of sadness here tonight. We're at Stradbrook, and this is where one of the victims, James Grigg, went to school. Now, these two men died on Tuesday. They were about 12 miles north of Musakala, deep into Taliban territory, trying to drive out the insurgents when they were killed by an improvised explosive device. Now, Lance Corporal Scott Hardy, he was 26, came from Chelmsford. He was a bricklayer before he joined up and first went to Afghanistan three weeks after he finished training. Now, today, his commanding officer said he was steadfast under fire and hugely brave. Scott's family and girlfriend said in a statement, words fail to express the sorrow only a heartbroken family knows. To lose Scott is to lose a huge part of life itself, but he'll always be with us, making us smile, giving us pride and gratitude. Rest in peace, valiant friend. Now, as I mentioned, Private James Grigg, he was 21, born at Hartersmere, came here to school in Stradbrook. Um, the regiment said he'd quickly become and always would be a true Viking. His great passion was cricket. It was a game he excelled in. And this afternoon, this tribute from one of his former teachers. Many of the staff that work here now remember James, as I do. In fact, taught him art. He was a very good artist, but most of all a cricketer, an absolutely outstanding cricketer. He gave a lot back to the cricket club because he spent a lot of his time here when he was here coaching. I think James really epitomised what the cricket club's all about. Selflessness, dignity, honour, respect. Well, the Defence Secretary Bob Ainsworth has paid tribute too, saying the loss of these two men will be keenly felt. Now, tomorrow we have the funeral in Bury St Edmunds of senior aircraftsman Luke Southgate. He was 20, based at RAF Honington. He died near Kandahar Airfield in Afghanistan last month. He, too, was the victim of an explosive device. Kevin Birch, BBC Look East, in Suffolk. And there's more coverage of that story on the Look East website. Later on the programme, unlikely bedfellows in the run-up... Let's take a closer look now at the news from Essex, Suffolk and Norfolk. And there's been a boost for Essex car workers today. The government's promised to safeguard jobs at Ford Motors by helping to develop a new range of eco-friendly cars. 
On the production line in Essex today, the business secretary was taking aim at the motor industry. And I don't even have a union card. Lord Mandelson was targeting Ford's engine plant at Dagenham with government assistance. £360 million worth of loan guarantees towards a big investment plan for Ford sites across Britain. We're going to see British technology, uh, British engines, British cars, all remodelled, redesigned for a low carbon future, supplying what is going to be a very major growing market, not just in our country and not just in uh, Europe, uh, but around uh, the world. One site which will benefit from the new investment is Ford's research centre at Dunton near Basildon. Nearly 3,000 engineers work here, developing the future engines and vans made at UK plants. Last year, 350 agency staff lost their jobs at Dunton as projects were put on hold in the recession. The new money will get staff working on a range of low-emission diesel and petrol engines. Last week, Lord Mandelson announced a similar package to help Vauxhall plants in Luton and Ellesmere Port. Tonight, the Conservatives accused the government of election campaigning with taxpayers' money. Richard Bond, BBC Look East. The High Court has ordered campaigners to leave a protest camp in South End. The group, which calls itself Camp Cuckoo, set up their tents at Priory Park last month. They're demonstrating against a scheme to widen the road. Now a judge has ruled the campaigners have no right to be there. Checks will be carried out on noise levels at Norwich Airport. KLM Engineering wants planning permission for an engine testing site. Local people say unauthorised testing has been noisy and disruptive. Environmental health officers will report back before councillors rule on the application. Universities have been told today how much money they'll get from the government for the next academic year. In this region, three out of five are facing a budget cut once you take inflation into account. Here's Amelia with the winners and the losers. Well, the university that's taking the biggest cut is the Norwich College of the Arts with a reduction of 3.5%. Also on the list of losers, the University of East Anglia. Clear winners, though, are University Campus Suffolk with a 4.6% rise and Anglia Ruskin with a campus in Chelmsford and Cambridge getting 4.3%. We've done better um, this year than many other universities because our numbers have been growing year on year. We've been attracting more and more students who want to come and study us, study with us. Uh, we think because of the attractiveness of our uh, programmes here and uh, that has driven up um, our funding because funding is related to student numbers. But with a government cap on student numbers, it, it could be a very different story next year. Now, the University of Essex has seen a token funding rise, but with the rate of inflation running at about 2%, it loses out in real terms. I think it will mean some slimming down in the coming year, but my real concern is the two years following that. And if we see a further reduction in public expenditure, then I think we're going to struggle in terms of possibly some job reductions, but probably more importantly, an inability to invest in the student experience. Now, overall, our universities will receive a small funding increase, but once again, take into account inflation, and that actually works out at a loss of 1.5%. It's looking like tough times ahead. Amelia, thank you very much.